Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Going through the Bible for the fourth time, we come today to the book of Hosea, Hosea chapter 7, and we resume our study in verse number 8. You can study the entire Bible with me anytime that you want to. You can study the whole Bible with me, any part of the Bible with me, Genesis through Revelation, or begin in the beginning, go all the way through the book of Revelation, however you want to do it. The archives are for you right there. Four series going through the Bible. All you have to do is choose, click, and listen. That's at the Bible verse by verse dot com. Okay, let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Hosea chapter 7, verse 8. Ephraim hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Well, that's such a good description of modern evangelicalism today. Just kind of half-baked. Little here, nothing there. A pancake that is burnt black on one side and raw on the other side isn't fit to eat. It's good for nothing. And so is Israel. It's fit for nothing. They have a show of religion, but no relationship with God. Want to be too much like the world, just like modern evangelicalism. Got to be cool in the eyes of the world. Nobody ever gets saved in those churches. All they do is travel from church to church depending on who has the best entertainment, which pastor is the biggest buffoon on stage. No one ever gets saved. How can you get saved when sin isn't called sin? How can you get saved when the Word of God is not preached purely? How, do you, how can you get saved when you don't even have the true Word of God? You're using the message or the NIV Satanic translations of nothing. Wouldn't be too much like the world. Yeah, you got the name Christian, but you're like a half-baked pancake. As far as God is concerned, Jesus said, I'll spit you right out of my mouth. That's what he thinks of a pancake like that, or a lukewarm church, or lukewarm Christians. Spit you right out of my mouth. You call yourself a Christian, and you don't have the guts to proclaim my word. Or you roll your eyes at those who do. Nine. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Ah, he's too caught up in the world. I've got it made. I'm cool. We're neat. We're cool. We're just like the Assyrians. <laughs> Ain't that neat? We're just like the Egyptians. Wow. They think we're cool. Yeah. We're, we're just, you know, like, like I heard the one, the so called Christian rock and roll artists say, you know, our Christian music is so good now, you can't even tell that it's Christian. Well, congratulations, you've arrived. And you're going to arrive in hell, which is where you're taking a lot of people, too, who think that this is Christianity, and it's not. I'll never forget that statement. Strangers have devoured, and she doesn't even know it. No, because she's so occupied with the world, doesn't even think about it. Yea, gray hairs are here, and there upon him, yet he knoweth it not. Israel was forced to pay off her enemies. They had to pay Egypt and Assyria just to leave them alone. Their sin was making them weaker as a judgment by God all the time. I didn't even realize it. They, if they would have been in tune with God and the Word of God, they would have realized that they were under the judgment of God. Nothing, nothing was going right, just like in modern evangelical churches. No, no one gets saved. Don't you see? That everybody has a different opinion about the Word of God and, and the preacher never stands up and says, this is right and this is wrong and this is sin and this is evil and you must repent of your sin and nobody gets saved. And don't you see that? No, they don't see that. You know why? Because they're right in the middle of it and they love it. 
If they'd be in the word, like if Israel would have been in the word, they would have realized, hey, things aren't right. And they would have been under conviction. They would have repented. Didn't happen with Israel. Doesn't happen today. It's disgusting. 10. And the pride of Israel testifieth to his face. And they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all this. Well, why should they? They're having too much fun in sin. They're having too much fun with their compromise. They don't care about God. They long ago forgot about God. And the discipline of the Lord didn't even make a dent in their sin. They didn't care how much suffering they, their sin caused them. They won't repent. You say, well, I go to a modern evangelical church and we're rich and we're growing and we got a great program and we got these committees and, and our music is fantastic. Can't even tell that it's Christian. It's so good. And our preacher, huh, he wears jeans and they're not even clean. He wears a T-shirt. Yeah, and he gets on the stage and he does push-ups. And he runs around with a squirt gun. And he makes us laugh, and we clap, and it's just really neat. You couldn't even tell that he was a preacher. I suppose not. And because they're so caught up in that kind of garbage, they don't realize that they're totally useless to Almighty God. Totally. And so their uselessness doesn't wake them up because they're outwardly successful. Someday it's going to come crashing down. Book of Revelation talks about Babylon. And that's what they are. Babylon the great. Babylon the spiritual harlot. Going to come crashing down. 11. Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt. They go to Assyria. You know a dove... It's not a very smart bird, you know that? They are too simple-minded to notice even when they are in danger. And Israel's sinfulness has made her oblivious to the trouble that she was creating for herself through her sin. And that's why God calls her a silly dove. <laughs> you're completely ignorant of the fact that, that you're, about, you're about to die. Somebody's about to blow your head off. Silly dove, don't even recognize it. You're on your own little world where you think everything is good. You're so spiritually dull that you're clueless to the fact that you're in danger. And if you knew the word of God, you would, it would snap you out of it. But you don't care. And they don't care. And they won't care until they're burning in hell. It's like many modern professing Christians today. They don't care. They don't care. They, they've got what they've got, and they're fine with it. And they won't care till they're burning in hell. Twelve. When they shall go, I will spread my net upon them. I will bring them down like the fowls of the heavens. I will chastise them as their congregation hath heard. God was the hunter, and he was about to bag his game, namely Israel. 13. Woe unto them, for they have fled from me. Destruction unto them, because they have transgressed against me. Though I have redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. The only one who could help Israel. And the only one who wanted to help Israel was God. But they wouldn't let him do it. <clears throat> you can't help one spiritually if they don't want help. You can give them the truth. You can plead with them to repent and receive Christ. You can plead with them to obey the word of God so that their lives won't be a mess and going in the wrong direction at a breakneck speed. You can show them examples of 
God turning people's lives around through Christ. If they don't want help, you can't force it. They're going to go their merry way. 14. And they have not cried unto me with their heart. When they wailed upon their beds, they assembled themselves for grain and wine, and they rebel against me. They were miserable. The Israelites were miserable because of their sin. Instead of sleeping, they cried all night. Don't you get it? Something's wrong here. 15. Though I have bound and strengthened their arms, yet do they imagine mischief against me. God had trained them from the very beginning to be righteous and to look to him for help. But they were biting the hand that was trying to help them. That had, that had helped them in the past tremendously and continually wants to help them, but they keep biting his hand with their rebellion and their refusal to repent. 16, they return, but not to the Most High. They are like a deceitful bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. God had great plans for Israel, wonderful plans to bless them. But they were not experiencing those wonderful times. Like a faulty bow that causes an arrow to miss the target, Israel's sin was causing her to miss the target. The bullseye of holiness was not being hit, so the blessing that went with it was not happening either. Let's go into chapter 8. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come like an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. <clears throat> an eagle attacks its prey with speed and power. And that is how Israel's enemy, Assyria, is going to attack them, like an eagle attacking his prey, fast and furious. To Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. They acknowledge God, but only in their head. They acknowledge God in the time of their trouble, but only with their panicked emotions. And they did know the facts about God, but their devotion was not to him at all. Their devotion was corrupted by their desire for idols and the sin that they promoted. Verse 3, Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. The good that Israel rejected was first and foremost God himself, and along with God, his holy law, and along with that, the written word of God. So it's not surprising that their enemies, who are also the enemies of God, pursued them and will plummet them. For they have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made idols for themselves that they may be cut off. They didn't include God in any area of their life. They didn't consult him when they made decisions. They didn't consult him concerning their daily life. They did not govern their lives by his written word. They were a nation without boundaries, nor did they desire to live for him. So he gave them over to their sin and to the punishment that surely followed. And nothing has changed. The same thing will happen today and is happening. Study the whole Bible with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. All you need to bring is your Bible. Click and listen. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be. 
by praying for me and praying for God's word. And also click the donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. I'll see you next time here on Scripture, verse by verse.